Hello and welcome to a very interesting episode of Fully Charged Plus. Charging cars, should, you know, you sort of think that would be so simple. You plug them in, it's like, you know, like your toaster or your, your phone. But what is happening with car chargers is really interesting and the technology is developing very fast and we're seeing some new, very exciting technology here today. Flav, thank you for coming along. Hypervolt. Tell me the story behind, behind why you started Hypervolt. Um, we were looking around at the market and we kind of got the silly idea that we might be able to um, add a little value to the landscape out there. So we got going about three years ago in the summer of 2018. You know, my co-founder and I, uh, as many more co-founders right now, but at the time we were doing a trip that was the first big trip, you know, in an electric car. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a pleasant experience. There's no servicing, there's no where to stop, you know, you have children in the back of the car and everything like that, it just wasn't doable. So we thought to ourselves, hmm, this might be a very exciting opportunity, kind of playing into, you know, energy markets and the future of sustainability and other things. So that's kind of how we got going. And so, the, today. I mean, the thing is that I've got like a socket at home that's just like a, ho a box yeah. with a hole in it, you shove your cable in, you plug your car in, you know, all, all the rest of this, there's no software attached to it. It's just a, it's just a switch and a plug, really. And, you know, that's one way to look at it. But what you've got to realize is that, you know, we're at the very beginning of kind of this exciting new movement. And if you look at all new technologies of the past, the, the really interesting thing is over the last 50 or 60 years, every big hardware revolution has ultimately been won or kind of brought forward for everybody in the world to use by virtue of software. So if you're missing that complete perfect marriage, it's probably not going to get, you know, to the right price, to the right level of efficiency, to the right everything else. And the other thing you've got to look at is the grid was never designed to cope with everybody driving an EV. Now, we all kind of know that, but you know, you've got option A. What is option A? Stop, you know, digging holes in the ground. Let's upgrade all the infrastructure and all the sockets and all the fuses and all the homes. We probably need to come up with something smarter than that. And that's the power of software. It gives us the solution and it's kind of right here in our pockets. Right. I mean, that's certainly something I think a lot of early adopters of electric vehicles are aware of. Mm. Let's for a moment say, outside of Tesla. Yes. Is the, the, the hardware is fine, the batteries are they're all good, they drive well, they steer well, all that stuff, but the software often lets them down. And it's the software, and that's one of the curses of Tesla, is they've got the software right. And that's mm. what, and, and I think the same thing can be said with chargers and with the infrastructure that's now going to plug into all these cars. It's, it's absolutely down to the software. So I love the look of the, of the, of the wall box there. It's, it's very nice. So can Thank you tell you. me about what, what, what goes on with that? One of the greatest things that's gone into the thinking behind Hypervolt is this light pattern, right? And it sounds like something very, perhaps silly, perhaps, you know, easy to achieve, but there are multiple elements in the process of how you communicate with your user the state of your application right. or right, the state of your hardware. So the idea with Hypervolt is that there's a color for everything that happens. If it's charging, it's going to be green. If it's ready for you, it's going to be blue. If it's on scheduled charging, it's purple. So you right. don't need to think, you don't need to pull an app out of your pocket. You look at it and you know what it's doing at all times, you know? Right. And God forbid there's a fault, it will be red. That's never happened to us until right. now and hopefully never will. <laughs> So. But you've got the red in there just in case. We got the red in there just in case, right? <laughs> but that is so simple. So there's no, uh, there's no kind of uh, screen which tells you how many kilowatts are because you don't really need to. You just need to know it's charging and or it's not charging or it's going to charge. And we do offer a complete suite for those for those people that are interested. You know, which is many of our customers. They've they've gone into the EV market for the reason of, of saving money, of, of being greener. So we help them discover that. So we got um, a complete cloud service that includes mobile applications for Android and iOS, for tablets as well. And we also have a web portal that they can log in and they can track their consumption, they can monitor their spend, input their energy tariffs. It's all kinds of things they can do to control the unit, but also to see how they're doing. And we also track, very importantly, the carbon offsets. So they know, you know, I've gone green. And I say, okay, I used to drive X amount before. And we kind of calculate oh, this is how much carbon you've actually saved right. for the planet since you've been a, a, at least a Hypervolt customer. Yeah, right. yeah. So it's... And so, well, can, I mean, can, we, can you plug it in and show us it, how, it, how it, of course. it all works? Let's go for it. So one thing that we designed Hypervolt to do is kind of be a one-stop shop in that you can perfectly wrap a five or a seven and a half meter cable around it. So we created this space neatly at the back. So yeah. you don't need to, you know, we like things to be neat. Yeah. Um, that's how we designed them. Well, you can't also, if, you're, if it's in your, at your home and the, the cable's across the floor and you drive on it, that's not a good, it's good it's to keep it on It's not a good experience. No, yeah. you come in, you wrap it up. Oh my God, it's gone green. And you can see. <laughs> That's it, the colors changed, you know, right. it's working and there's nothing else you need to do. So right. that's the fantastic thing about it. That is thing, actually it? very interesting because I wasn't even looking at it, but I immediately noticed it's changed color. Yep. So that tells you in a, the most simple way possible, it is charging the car because that's often a concern. Yep. 
Is it working? You, when you first use it, you go, is it, what, is it doing anything? Because yeah. there's no noise or anything. And you know, like um, consistency is very important because you know you can have different cars. In a Tesla, maybe it's a little bit better. You've got an LCD and it tells you all oh, the yeah. cars charging X amount, but you don't want to think, you don't want to have to pull apps out of your pocket, and everything right. should be as simple as possible in the, in the user experience. Or and then presumably, you, because that, that's going to be connected to, to your Wi-Fi or hardwire yeah. to your internet connection, you, uh, it can be updated. It, it's in it's in communication constantly with your. So it actually streams data every one to two seconds. Right. So you've got very granular information about the grid, about everything else. And the power of Hypervolt is we actually managed to achieve a sub 50 millisecond round trip from the moment you put in a command in your phone to the moment something happens on the charger. Wow. Wow. Yeah? That does not go over your local Wi-Fi. It goes all the way to our cloud wow. in Ireland, in AWS, and back to here. Wow. Right? And if you'll allow me yeah. to kind of demonstrate that a little bit, all I'm going to do using the iPhone app, I'm just going to control the brightness. Wow. That was it. <laughs> that, and that, so the signal, when you press the button on that. that I am went, pressing. That... I am merely <laughs> dragging my finger. But yeah. well, that, isn't, that isn't communicating directly from the phone there no, to that. It's going... That is going over internet, right? <laughs> and every internet. person we showed this to is blown away is by so how insanely intense. fast it is. <laughs> And we've taken you know, major, major steps to kind of get anywhere near this kind right. of performance and how we optimize the you know, quantity of data we send yeah. and how fast we send and everything else. But this is a bit of a gimmick in that you know, LED is one thing, yeah. and it's fun to watch, and it's a very visual mean of communicating the power of what we have. But what about, you know, I want to schedule my charge. OK. Because that's what I was going to ask is, you know, can let's you do something serious, with, you know, let's do serious or, business, yeah. so to speak. So, OK, perhaps I'm an Octopus Go customer or something like that. I go on the app. I'll do something like um, 11 p.m., 4 in the morning. OK, cool. So I'm kind of happy. The app tells me, oh, OK, you've selected about five hours. That's going to be about X number of kilowatts and miles. Right. Save. Um, and that's it. That's kind of all I, all I had to do here was just... Right. Mm. So it's now waiting. It will now wait until 11 that's o'clock it. tonight. Now it's going to wait. Oh, it's throbbing. I will admit, I have been known to get up at 1 o'clock in the morning because I'd forgotten. And I go, oh, the electricity's cheap, quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No need to do that anymore. Right. Uh, and we're, we're at the very beginning of what's possible with this technology. Yeah. So and what about voice controls? Because that's becoming increasingly popular with, with all those things. So one of the cool, fantastic things we can do with this capability of like being able to rapidly communicate with our chargers is, of course, enabling all kinds of things via home assistance. So let's give it a go. Say, you know, you're having dinner, you're wondering what's going to happen to your car, and you probably forgot what time your cheap tariff starts at. It's as easy as asking, Alexa, ask my Hypervolt current status. Your car is not currently being charged and is scheduled to start in eight hours and 45 minutes. Ooh. Yeah, so that's, that's fantastic. Nice. So um, <laughs> we want to get the user experience to the point where everything you do should be as simple as possible and yeah. there's just no effort involved anymore. So the thing that I'm a bit obsessed with, but I know that there's a lot of interest in is vehicle to grid. So have you got plans in the future for... We so absolutely do have plans in the future. Um, and I wouldn't give a timeline publicly now because there's a lot of work to do to get it right. But in the case of V2G, there's a lot of work to do, not by us, but by the auto automaker yeah. as well. V2G is an interesting one, and I'll keep it very simple. The equipment will cost a lot more, so there's going to be an uptake in price. And we're going to need to do even better on you know, the, the savings that we're able to offer. Um, as a building step to V2G, we're going to offer hyper green mode. So because we're, 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 we're good with software and we can do that bit, what we're going to offer people is the ability to only charge their cars when the energy coming from the grid to their house is green. And right. we'll figure out when that is. We'll report it to them. All they have to do is this. Right. They push a button and they say, look, I'm happy with maybe less range for tomorrow or, you know, I don't drive that much, yeah. but I'd really, really like so it's when the, to the use CO2, green energy. The CO2 count of the grid electricity exactly. is lower, it will, it will kick in. Uh, yeah, exactly. And we use energy market price data, they had price schedules that they do there, and we figure out, oh, okay, actually, for this postcode that you live in, tomorrow between 8 and 10, it's going to be wind energy. That's right. perfect. And we figure that out. So think of it as like the Google Nest. The power to change LEDs in 40 milliseconds is cool, yeah. but it's a bragging right. Yeah. But I want you to imagine the power of being able to control energy consumption and all charges in the country in 40 milliseconds. Right, yes. That I want you to imagine yeah. putting this power in the hands of the national grid or working with them you yeah. know, in the future to say, look, 
how are we doing? Yeah. How are we going to enable everybody, yeah. everybody in the UK to have access to this? Yeah. Right? And you know, it all comes together and it's got a hundred elements that you know, we need to get right yeah. as, a, as an industry, as a, as a collaborative. Um, but that's the mission that we have at Hypervolt. Right. How do you take this perfect marriage of hardware and software so, yeah. and you create something really great together at a price that's affordable yeah. to... Because the other one we know about, which, which I know there's been some experimentation in the UK about that, is the, you know, the, the actual backbone of the national grid. Everyone, there's no problem with that. That can charge millions of electric vehicles, but the very local grid in your street could be under strain. So if there's 22 cars on one street, can you manage that sort of local? Absolutely, and this is the main reason why we've made such a huge investment in software and to being able to communicate with the charges very quickly. Because not only we're able to communicate, but we, we know with coordinates, with geo coordinates, where they are. So we can do software work and figure out, well, what does the street mean? Well, it's these 22 charges. And if they're used at the same time, well, how much power do I have on this particular street, right? Um, and you can do that yourself as a company. You can supply that facility to people like the National Grid and say, look, you've got an API. We're going to do some software bits and you're going to tell us, hey, I'm struggling on this street. Can you please tune everything down 20% for the next hour? And we guarantee that 40 to 50 millisecond round trip window. Yes. You click it's really quick. and it's really quick. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's about future proofing, right? Yeah. So LEDs, cool thing to show. Yeah but the reality behind why we made this investment and we tried to make it quick is we have this massive ability to kind of help make adoption sustainable because otherwise it's not going to happen yeah. or it's going to happen a lot slower. Yeah, and yeah. for most lots of people. But I mean, it's great. I just love the idea of, of telling my charger to do something. Well, I've got a surprise for you. Right. I've got a big surprise for you. Um, <laughs> our staff, uh, who many of which are, are, are your greatest fans, <laughs> have decided to prepare a little bit of... Uh, so oh, okay. I'm going to ask my Hypervolt. Alexa, ask my Hypervolt to step up to red alert. Are you absolutely sure? It doesn't mean changing the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrifying to hear that actually <laughs> spoken by a machine. That is perfect. That is very, very good. I'm going to ask my Hypervolt to do one last thing okay. for us. Alexa, ask my Hypervolt to get this party started. Like it's 1999. <laughs> what a cool... I think that's a perfect ending. We're just going to groove on. Yeah. And we'll see you music. later. <laughs> Thanks for watching.